This is of course a testicular lymphoma. The clue is in the age of the patient. Lymphomas are the most common testicular tumour in the elderly. And in fact, 5% of all testicular malignancies are lymphomas. As in this case, the majority of testicular lymphomas are diffuse large B-cell lymphomas. Case number two is a spermatocytic seminoma, although the WHO is changing the name to spermatocytic tumour to completely differentiate it from the malignant classical seminoma. Spermatocytic tumours occur in an age range usually between about 52 and 59. This is slightly older than the age range at which classical seminomas occur. Spermatocytic tumours are not associated with cryptorchidism and they usually occur in the pure form except when there is a sarcomatous component. In addition, the serum markers are negative and Immuno for PLAP, OCT34 and CD117 are all negative. Spermatocytic tumours almost never metastasize. This case is a superb example of the vanishing testes syndrome. This is where one or both testes may disappear before puberty or birth. The testis regresses, leaving the vas deferens, often with epididymis, and the testis itself is composed of a vascular fibrous nodule showing calcification and hemosiderin deposition, and these features are diagnostic of a vanishing testis. This is an example of a very frequent specimen that we see in urological pathology, and that is a torted hydatid of Morgani, otherwise known as appendix testis. The problem with these structures is that they have a very narrow neck, making them particularly susceptible to torsion. And you can see in the first picture that the appendix testis has become extremely congested as a result of the torsion. And this condition is a very common cause of acute scrotum in children. This is an example of a sex cord stromal cell tumour. In this particular case, it is an adult granulosa cell tumour. These occur between the ages of 16 and 76, and they may present with gynecomastia. Most have a benign behaviour, but if the size is greater than 7 centimetres with necrosis and vascular invasion, this suggests aggressive behaviour. The problem with all sex cord stromal cell tumours is that it is difficult to predict the behaviour from histology alone. In this particular case, the tumour is very large, and in fact it did behave aggressively spreading to paraaortic lymph nodes. Histologically, it looks like the counterpart that you may see in an ovarian granulosa cell tumour with solid cystic microfollicular or gyriformer areas and collexner bodies may also be present. As with all sex cord stromal cell tumours, the one immunostain that clinches the diagnosis is inhibin. This is Sertoli cell only, and the Johnson score you can see is 2. The Johnson score is a, a continuum of appearances ranging from a score of 10 where there is full spermatogenesis through to 1 where the seminiferous tubules are replaced by fibrous tissue with no epithelial cells. The Johnson score, of course, is very easy for scores of 1, 2 or 10. 
It is worth knowing what the Johnson score is and how to score it because clinicians may well request a Johnson score when they are sending testicular biopsies for assessment. This is an example of an embryonal carcinoma. These tumours occur in patients up to the age of 30. The old British classification used to be a malignant teratoma undifferentiated or MTU. These tumours often coexist with a yolk sac component, other mature elements, and they may also be combined with seminoma. If they are combined with seminoma, then it is the non-seminomatous component that will dictate how the patient is treated. The immunostaining characteristics of embryonal carcinoma are positive A1, A3, positive OCT34, positive CD30 and also positive PLAP. This tumour is a classical seminoma. The clues are often present when the specimen is on the cut-up bench. First of all, the age of the patient. These typically occur between the ages of 30 and 40. Non-seminomatous non germ cell tumours tend to occur a decade earlier. Seminomas have a rather potato-like cut surface and histologically monotonous sheets of cells with very prominent nucleoli and between the cells there may be lymphocytes and also granulomas may be present. Occasionally a syncytium trophoblast may also be seen. The immuno profile for seminoma is negative A1A3 but PLAP, OCT34 and CD117 are all positive. When sampling seminomas or suspected seminomas it is always worth making sure you get the reti because invasion of the reti stroma is associated with a poorer prognosis and the oncologist will always want to know if there is reti involvement. The diagnosis for this case is a common condition we see in up to 40% of patients following vasectomy, presenting with pain in the upper pole of the epididymis or cord. This is a sperm granuloma. This case is another sex called stromal cell tumour and in this particular instance it is a Sertoli cell tumour. The peak age at which these occur is in middle age and the patients present with a testicular mass that grossly will have a solid white, grey or yellow appearance. Microscopically the tumour cells often form tubules. Again in this type of tumour the inhibin is positive. This case was an example of a testicular infarct that presented as a testicular mass. In this case the infarct was caused by vasculitis. And this demonstrates that not all testicular masses are tumours. Some may have unusual causes as in this case. This is an example of a benign papillary mesothelioma of the tunica vaginalis. These lesions occur in young men, often with a hydrocele sac with a papillary excrescence, and there may be somoma bodies associated with the lesions. Histologically, there is a vague resemblance to a papillary serous cystadenoma.
This tumour is a carcinoid. They occur around the ages of 45 to 50 and are extremely rare. In fact, less than 1% of all testicular tumours are carcinoids. Usually they are primary, but less frequently they may be part of a mature teratoma or a metastasis from a carcinoid elsewhere. Most primary testicular carcinoids are cured by orchiectomy and they are not usually associated with the carcinoid syndrome. This is a Leydig cell tumour and is the commonest of the sex called stromal cell tumours and account for around 3% of all testicular tumours. They typically occur around the ages of 30 to 45 and may present with gynecomastia. They are commoner in cryptorchid testes. This is an example of a benign fibrous pseudotumour. They occur in the 20s but can occur in a wide age range from children through to the elderly. There are numerous other names for this condition including reactive periorchitis, chronic periorchitis and fibroma, just to name three. Benign fibrous pseudotumours may be associated with a hydrocele and they arise on the tunica. This case is an example of granulomatous orchitis. Grossly, I think there is a bit of a resemblance to either a seminoma or lymphoma. The mean age at which granulomatous orchitis occurs is 59 and there is usually a history of trauma. And in two thirds of cases, there may have been a urinary tract infection. Granulomatous orchitis may be idiopathic or it can be caused by an infection such as TB. This is another example of a granulosa cell tumour, except in this particular case it is not an adult type, it is a juvenile granulosa cell tumour. These occur in infants under five months old. They may be associated with gonadal dysgenesis or abnormal sex chromosomes and the behaviour is benign. This is a Sertoli cell nodule. These are extremely common they may be present in up to 20% of normal testes, but are most frequently seen in cryptorchid testes. They may be single or multiple and up to around 5 millimetres in diameter. Histologically, they are composed of infantile type seminiferous tubules, usually lined only by Sertoli cells. This is a yolk sac tumour. They only occur in the pure form in children, so this is an example of a pure yolk sac tumour as the patient was very young. They occur in an age range from birth through to nine years with a median age of 18 months. The final case is an example of testicular feminization. Here the phenotype is obviously female and it is due to androgen insensitivity of the target organs. The testes may be present either in the labia majora, inguinal canal or in the abdomen. In adults the seminiferous tubules usually contain Sertoli cells only.